This is Abbot Hunter's Tower in Mocklin, sometimes erroneously called Mocklin Castle. It's actually part of the old abbey that was here at Mocklin, and the abbey was under the control of the Abbot of Melrose. This is the start of the story of the Boar King of King and Clue. In about 1250, a troop of soldiers arrived here, and the Abbot of Melrose, the Lord Abbot, was in residence. Now, two of the soldiers within the group were Sir Percy Seaton and Lord Ruthven. Now, Sir Percy Seaton came to the Abbot explaining that he'd fallen in love with Mona. Mona was the daughter of the King and Clue Laird named Cormac. And although he, was tr he tried on many occasions to win her hand, Cormac was determined that, he, that she would marry an older man who she did not love. Now, the legend goes that there is a tunnel running from here right the way to King Clue. The abbot called in one of the other members of the, of the church fraternity who explained that this tunnel in the, in the past had been used to force the laird of King and Clue, Cormac, who was infamous for his dislike of the church and for his, his temper, had forced him to pay his dues to the church that is, provide the funds by which, by which it ran. Now the next part of the story jumps to King and Clue itself. This is King and Clue, where the burn joins the River Eyre. So this is the King and Clue Glen. The ruins of the old castle still survive at the top of this glen. So Cormac, in the 13th century was the laird here. He was nicknamed the King of the Clue, also known as the Boar King. His great passion was hunting wild boar in the woods of Coilum. That probably refers to the district of Kyle in Ayrshire. In the 13th century, wild boar still survived in these parts. And on one occasion, Cormac was out with his retainers and with his best huntsman, who was known as Red Murta. And they came across this lair of a particularly large and ferocious wild boar. They set their boar hounds onto this huge beast, but the boar hounds were killed. In his fury, Cormac tried to force his huntsman, Red Murta, to go down there with his boar spear but he was having none of it. As a result, Cormac lost his temper, knocked the huntsman down into the pit, who was promptly killed. Now this preyed upon Cormac's mind to the extent that nobody would ever dare mention the name of his huntsman again. Now the link with the story of Mona and Sir Percy Seaton is that in the past, the church abbey up at Mocklin had fooled Cormac into paying his dues, his uh, tithes, by coming down their secret tunnel, which ended up in one of the dungeons in the base of the castle, and making terrible noises, unearthly noises, but Cormac took to be the wild boar. And in his panic, he ran up to the, the church, requested an exorcism, and of course paid his tithes. Now the abbot thought the way to allow Laomona to, to marry Sir Percy would be to re repeat the same trick after many years. So Mona requested that her marriage to the person she did not wish to marry would take place in the basement of the castle, in a room in which her own mother, it turned out, had been married, lying right next to the dungeon. 
Cormac was puzzled, but he agreed to this. The wedding started, then all of a sudden, this terrible noise. For in that dungeon, the skin and the head of the wire boy had been preserved, still preying on Cormac's mind. And this noise, the door was burst open from the dungeon, and out came what looked like a wild boar and a bloody hun dead huntsman. It was, of course, Sir Percy and Lord Ruthven in, in disguise. They grabbed Mona and escaped up the tunnel, up to Mocklin. Such was the shock and the fear that Cormac and all the guests were paralysed and did nothing. So Mona and Sir Percy lived happily ever after. This is one of the old paths leading up towards King and Clue Castle. It's a very romantic spot. The story of uh, the Boar King, or King and Clue, comes from a series of 19th century publications known as the Ayrshire Wreath. It's not clear whether it's true or false. Maybe a bit of both.